Good afternoon, and welcome to our weekly COVID-19 update for the town of Plymouth. I'm Steve Trifletti, your Plymouth Town Moderator, and we're here each week at noon for this update. Uh, this forum is being brought to you live by PAC TV at Comcast on channels 13 and 15 and Verizon channels 43 and 47. You can also watch this on PAC TV's streaming channel by going to pactv.org slash live. And for questions during today's forum, please email plymouthinfo at pactv.org. These forums can be replayed uh, at pactv.org slash Plymouth. Uh, today's panel... Uh, joining uh, Ken Tavares, Matt Muratori, and me include uh, Dr. Mark Wilson, uh, Patricia Fry, Peter Parcelin, Michael Jackman, Susan Moran, and Amy Naples. Uh, this is update number 75. And each, uh, with each update, we strive uh, to provide you with information from officials and experts uh, so that the information will be trustworthy and you can rely on it uh, as Plymouth and our region respond uh, to the pandemic of the coronavirus. We begin each of our uh, weekly presentations with a medical uh, component. And joining us today, we have uh, Dr. Mark Wilson. He is Professor Emeritus from the University of Michigan. He is an epidemiologist. Welcome, Mark. Thanks very much, Steve. Um, I appreciate the opportunity again to be with everyone. Um, <clears throat> let me start as I usually do with a question that was uh, recently asked, <clears throat> and one that I think will uh, be of interest to, to the listeners. Um, there's been a lot of talk about herd immunity recently. Can you explain what this is and why it is important? Also, how does herd immunity relate to the new COVID vaccine? So the, the concept of herd immunity refers to the proportion or percentage of people in a population who are immune, either from past infection or from being vaccinated. Very simply, the more people who become immune, the fewer there are who can become infected. In other words, as more people become infected or eventually vaccinated, and now we have that on the horizon, uh, the virus has fewer of us as susceptible people to infect. So the virus basically runs out of new people who can be part of a chain of transmission. In addition, not only are there fewer people to be infected, but this means there are fewer people who can be infectious to others. Remember, you can't transmit to somebody unless you are infected. So those of us who get infected, sorry, those of us who get vaccinated, um, are not only protecting ourselves from infection, but everyone else around us as well. And so this is an important feature of what we can think of as population level immunity or what we call herd immunity. So as the proportion of a population that, that is immune increases, let's say 50 or 60 or even 70%, the proportion of susceptible people correspondingly goes down and then the number of infectious people also declines. Eventually, we get to a point where there are not enough new transmission events to sustain the virus in a region. And this is what we call the herd immunity threshold. This herd immunity threshold, it varies uh, according to transmission characteristics that are different for each virus or bacterium uh, or any pathogen. And in the case of, for example, seasonal influenza, the herd immunity threshold is estimated to be around 40 to 50%. For a much more highly contagious measles virus, on the other hand, it's around 85 or 95% of people who must be vaccinated uh, to achieve that threshold and therefore to uh, interrupt transmission. For the new coronavirus, um, the herd immunity threshold is still being estimated, still being calculated, but it's probably in the range of say 60 to 80%. That's the proportion of the population that needs to be immune before transmission will naturally decline. And we can lower this in a sense um, artificially, it's a, it's a theoretical threshold and we can lower it by 
using other mitigation measures such as masks, social distancing, and so forth. And that's what happened earlier in the pandemic. Um, at present, perhaps two or three percent of the U.S. population has been infected and now is presumably immune. That's a long way from the herd immunity threshold for this virus. The new vaccines that are being developed will eventually move us towards the 60 to 80 percent estimated threshold. But it's not clear how many people will actually accept being vaccinated. So in the meantime, we can effectively reduce this theoretical herd immunity threshold by reducing transmission intensity through our prevention behaviors. And we all, we all know what they are. Um, another question that was asked is, what is the role of asymptomatic carriers in spreading infection? And for how long are these asymptomatic carriers contagious? Well, it's not easy to answer these two important questions because it's really difficult for epidemiologists to study asymptomatic transmission. And anyone can be asymptomatic but not know they are infected. And so if you're not infected and not, it's not known that you're infected, uh, sorry, if, if you're not showing symptoms and it's not known that you're infected, it's very difficult to study this. Health researchers are really now trying to devise ways to monitor large numbers of people, many of whom may never become infected during the study, um, and only some of whom will be asymptomatic even if they do become infected. So here's the challenge in trying to answer this question. Um, although you can be infectious without having COVID symptoms, most evidence so far suggests that Transmission occurs primarily from close contact with people who do have symptoms. However, there's some risk of spread from people who never develop symptoms or, or who are just uh, pre-symptomatic uh, before those symptoms appear. And this is why health officials are recommending that we act as if we could be infectious whenever we're around others who aren't part of our normal group of, of uh, interactions. So yes, protect others, even if you feel fine, because you don't know. Uh, the WHO has shown through contact tracing studies in various countries that asymptomatic carriers are less likely to transmit the virus than those who develop symptoms. And in part, this is because one of the major COVID symptoms is coughing, which of course spreads particles to others. However, people who do not have symptoms still can transmit the virus to others just by talking, laughing, or, or even just breathing. So studies are now underway to understand how often asymptomatic transmission occurs and for how long these people can remain contagious. If you suspect you are infected but have mild or no symptoms, you should get a PCR test and watch carefully to see if symptoms develop. Even before you receive the test results, you should really err on the side of caution and limit contact with others. And remember, a negative test result, even if it is an accurate negative test result, does not mean that you are not or are not infected. It just means that the swab procedure didn't capture virus at the time that the sample was taken. So the the important thing to remember here is that there's a, an incubation period uh, between the time that you were exposed and the time that you are infectious. And this can be many days. And it, it actually uh, is likely to take longer than for when you develop symptoms. So you have, sorry, symptoms take longer than for when the incubation period occurs. And so you are able to be infectious before you show any symptoms. So this is why even accurate testing has limited use in helping us to determine who we have contact with and how we behave around those people. So without widespread, regular and accurate testing, we really must continue to be safe with the recommended practices until the level of transmission declines dramatically. If all else goes as planned, um, this should be during the next year as more and more people are vaccinated. So in the meantime, stay safe and follow the recommended mitigation practices. Let me stop there and I'd be happy to answer any questions from viewers later on in the broadcast. 
Thank you. That is Dr. Mark Wilson. He is Professor Emeritus, University of Michigan School of Public Health, uh, Department of Epidemiology. And at this time, we are joined by uh, Patricia Fry. She is now principal of Plymouth South High School. We're going to begin our educational segment. And uh, welcome back, uh, Pat. Hi, Steve. Patty. How are you? Um, thanks for having us today. Um, it's good to see a lot of familiar faces. I was here last when last year in my role as assistant superintendent for human resources, and I've been fortunate to be back at South High for a little bit. Um, have those moratorium children here, so it's it's going very well. Um, and we really have had a great opening, and I can't believe I said to my staff today, I can't believe we're already in the first quarter is over and we're back um, in the building. So um, it's been going well. Um, we're actually, our students participated in a big community service activity um, where we've been distributing turkey baskets to local families. So despite what Home happens South High School, we'll have come back. So um, those are you. things. So we're going to go uh, to Peter and then come back to you, okay? Because oh, okay. uh, we're having trouble hearing you. They're going to call you to try to work oh, on the sound. Okay. Perfect. All right. So uh, that is Patty Fry, and she's at Plymouth South High School. She'll stay with us, and we'll come back to her. At this time, we're going to go to Peter Parslin. Uh, he's at Plymouth North High School. Welcome, Peter. Hi. How are you? Good. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. All right. There we go. Uh, so uh, it's been an unusual year. Uh, North High School is forging ahead. Uh, I am really impressed. We continue to maintain all of our masking and distancing, um, and our students especially have been absolutely excellent at keeping up all the safety standards uh, to keep everyone healthy. I, I have really been so impressed by the way, uh, especially the kids have been able to handle this um, and really bob and weave with it. Um, Academically, the teachers have, have really worked hard to adapt their lessons to the new schedule, but also to build in, uh, you know, learning from those gaps in the spring we were worried about. Um, I meet with our department heads weekly, and we're constantly trying to reflect on how to improve um, what we're doing and share ideas. Um, we're trying to really streamline the online and remote learning processes. I know that's been um, a struggle for kids at home, especially to try and manage that, like any, any of us really trying to make this work. Um, and we're really focused on trying to just keep them locked in, even though they aren't necessarily with us every day. It's tough, but but it does seem to be working. Um, we just finished term one, uh, and the grades are, are generally where they were uh, last year, so that's promising. Um, athletics has moved forward. Uh, we have a new athletic director who I think you met uh, a few weeks ago, Mr. Domingos. Um, we, uh, without a MIAA tournament statewide this year, uh, the Patriot League tournament, uh, took place over the last few weeks, and uh, we had some great games. We got matched up with South, uh, as uh, Mrs. Fry could probably talk to you about uh, as well. The games were really good between North and South in soccer. I'm sure the kids have talked about it for years. Um, and we're also really proud of our field hockey team, uh, who just won the first ever Patriot League Cup at home. Um, and now we're looking at moving into winter sports that start on December 14th. Um, for the first practices there under all sorts of specific safety guidelines that just came out from the MIAA. Uh, so Mr. Domingos is working with the coaches on making sure we uh, stick with all those um, COVID protocols. Uh, we will, we have moved uh, wrestling and track into different seasons, but this season uh, in the winter, uh, we will have girls and boys basketball, boys and girls hockey and gymnastics. And we're really excited to finally get uh, our new co-op swim team started this season. Uh, that will have kids from both North and South on one team to get the, the, uh, the sports started for us in Plymouth. Uh, parents out there should know that our Meet the Coach Night is still happening for winter sports. Uh, that will be uh, Tuesday, December 1st at 6 for the hockey, gymnastics, and swim teams. Uh, and it will be Wednesday, December 2nd uh, at 6 for both girls and boys basketball. We split, split them up so that uh, we have uh, distancing in place for all of those parents that want to come and meet those coaches. Um, our clubs are still meeting. They're sticking to all the COVID protocol. I'm really impressed with the advisors trying to put all this stuff together. Uh, Plymouth North News or PNN just aired their first episode um, this week, uh, last week actually, uh, and they did a spectacular job putting together an informative and interesting episode uh, through all that's going on. Um, our band performed uh, for a very limited audience um, out on the turf and celebrated seniors a few weekends ago. 
Um, and just uh, this past week, our art and the community course students did a great class project. They went out to uh, the skate park and they painted the walls next to the skate park. Um, they did. A, they put the plan together, they got it all approved and they went out there and painted it. And then they went around um, and uh, put out uh, approved, uh, you know, uh, mask promotions uh, around uh, the waterfront. So uh, it looks awesome. They did a great job. I'm really impressed with those kids. So um, it, really the report from North is that we are uh, cautiously optimistic, I think is the right uh, way to phrase it. Um, our nurses are uh, really being thorough and thoughtful um, and they're working hard to, to keep the building operating and safe and healthy. Uh, but most importantly, what makes it all worth it is that the kids are making honestly the best out of this very weird school year. Um, and we're trying really hard to make sure that the year that they have um, is, is an experience that's safe, but really as valuable to learning and just the high school experience um, as possible for these kids. So um, the message is these, these kids have really risen to the occasion um, when, you know, we, we all kind of, I think from time to time, talk about how, you know, kids can be difficult at times. And, and people always, when they talk about me as a high school principal, want to say, oh, high school kids, they have been awesome. Um, and their parents have been great. Um, and I think that the message so far in these these last two months is that um, these kids up here, and I, and I know it's the same itself because I talk to Mrs. Fry all the time, um, are really want this year to happen. And they are they are doing everything they should and can to make it work. So thanks for having me on. Thank you. And that's Peter Parcelin and North High School. Uh, these are live, uh, coming to you live today, Tuesday, November 24th, 2020. It is our 75th. And uh, like with other broadcasts, both regionally and nationally, uh, sometimes we experience uh, some glitches uh, with the uh, connection. Uh, we're working on that with uh, Patricia Fry. So at this time, we're going to continue with Michael Jackman. He is District Director for Congressman William Keating's office. Uh, welcome, Mike. Thank you, Steve, and thank you to PAC-TV uh, for having me on today. Uh, I was having a little technical difficulty myself. I'm glad I was able to get my uh, device working here so I could be with you. Um, yeah, just uh, wanted to uh, report that, uh, as we know, the uh, transition between the two presidential administrations is progressing a little bit uh, further along today than maybe it had been uh, the last time we spoke, which is uh, a good thing, I think. And uh, it's very important for the incoming Biden administration to be able to uh, keep the momentum with the uh, vaccine programs going and have the information about the different vaccines and uh, plans on how to distribute and disseminate the vaccines, working with uh, state and local health departments. And uh, only by having that information will they be able to uh, uh, bring that to success. So. Uh, the vaccine news is obviously great news, but um, as Dr. Wilson said, we have to keep up our mitigation uh, strategies, both as uh, a, a government and both as a local government, state government, federal government, but on the personal level as well and in the community. So it's uh, so important to keep uh, distancing ourselves, wearing our masks, washing our hands, just being uh, vigilant and being cognizant of what we can do to reduce our own level of risk and reduce the risk of cap passing on the, uh, the virus to others. Um, just a few notes on some of the ongoing themes that people ask me about and that we, we uh, talk about on these calls. Uh, the IRS, um, the economic impact payments uh, will be running out as of the, the December 31st. So if uh, you do not have a payment issued by then and you were qualified for one, you would have to claim a recovery rebate credit when you file your 2020 taxes. We are starting to get some guidance on that. So uh, we'll be sharing that um, on our social media and with other folks as well. I know tax preparers are also going to be getting that guidance as well. I guess Heather's not on today, but um, I I'm sure she'll have that information. She also mentions a lot about the Paycheck Protection Program and the taxability of those proceeds and whether um, you can get the loan forgives or not. I know she's working with a lot of cl her clients on that. 
we're getting more guidance on that as well. And I know there'll be uh, information going to tax preparers about that over the next uh, uh, few weeks and months. So we are, it is that time to get ready to, to, to file your taxes for 2020. Make sure, make sure you have your receipts, make sure you have all the information you'll need. I know it's a little bit ahead of time. Most people like to get at least through the holidays before they even think about taxes. But um, you know, if you're making charitable donations, if you're uh, making capital purchases or other things that might be deductible, it's important to hang on to those receipts and get them organized so that when the time does come, you're ready to do that. And we are getting information, as I said, from the IRS about that. So uh, that's all I really have to report today, Steve, and uh, happy to take any questions. And I hope all of your viewers have a great and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. That's Michael Jackman. He is District Director for Massachusetts Congressman William Keating. And now we're going to go back to Plymouth South High School, where we're joined once again by Patricia Fry. Uh, she is the principal there. Uh, she joined us earlier this year uh, when she was serving as assistant superintendent, but now we're happy to see her back at Plymouth South High School. Welcome back, Patty. Hi, Steve. Can everyone hear me now? Wonderful. Hopefully. That's good. Oh, good. Yes. You'd think I'd have technology down after <laughs> the last year of our lives. So um, thank you. I, as I shared, I was here before in my prior role um, as assistant superintendent for HR. And um, I was fortunate to have the opportunity to come back um, as interim principal at South High School. Um, and I get to deal with those moratory children on a regular basis, which is fun. Um, and I'd like to echo my colleague Peter's remarks. Um, I can't say enough about the kids um, this year and the staff and the entire Plymouth community. Um, the way people have banded together has been remarkable. Um, this week alone, our student council has spearheaded turkey baskets for over 20 needy families and the collection of food that has come in from our staff and kids has been amazing. And they've done it with the COVID guidelines, whether they're putting the way where we deliver them to, and it's just tremendous. Um, it has also, I'd like to echo our custodial and cafeteria staff. Um, we do a staff member of the month and our cafeteria ladies were actually unanimously checked by the building for what they're doing above and beyond for our kids, um, especially with needy families and things of that nature. Uh, Mr. Parsons, his competitive gene is showing. We've had a lot of great success in a year with the Page First and or Patriots Cup. Um, a lot of schools in the state chose not to have any postseason play for our athletes. and. Um, our athletic directors, our coaches stepped up, and it was so great to see incredibly close shootouts in soccer and volleyball games that went into different layers, um, and the kids just having fun. It was just so wonderful because I've had many students say just being here is all they want, which is very different than pre-March of 2020. Um, and again, I can't. the families have embraced so many things. We're working north and south to roll out Chromebooks to our juniors. Um, over the next few weeks, really, because of these changing times. And um, we're really looking ahead of the curve, but I, people are just buying into everything we try to tackle. So um, our students after the holidays are trying to have a little inter-cohort challenge with one another because it feels like we have our students every other day. And each cohort has developed a little bit of a personality, which is a lot of fun. So we're trying to still get the fun in a high school, but also the academics have been fantastic. So. I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you, and that's Patricia Fry. She is principal at Plymouth South High School. And during this time of year, as we give thanks for what we have uh, during the pandemic, uh, it's nice to hear that at least with our students at our school, that they are now appreciating schools a little more because when you lose something, uh, it makes you realize what you have. So uh, it's great to hear that. Uh, from our schools, and we'll come back uh, to our participants um, by hearing questions answered. Uh, your questions can go to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And uh, earlier we heard from our federal uh, partner, uh, Michael Jackman, and now we go to one of our state partners. We welcome back uh, State Senator Susan Moran. Uh, Susan, welcome, and uh, congratulations on your recent re-election as State Senator for Plymouth and Surrounding Times. Uh, what do you have for us today? Uh, thanks, Steve. I appreciate the opportunity of being here. And, you know, it's really fitting to follow, uh, you know, Pete and uh, the 
superintendents and, the, and uh, Pete and Patty and principal because, you know, what what I could remark about is how well um, they work together as leaders and how the community really steps up to that to, to the extent that the kids are, are really, um, you know, just just doing what they can. And it reminds me of uh, the delegation work. I'm, I'm proud to be here with Matt Murituri. Um, just I'll report on a couple of things that we've been working together on, which I'm sure Matt will provide more detail in. Um, we have, with Matt um, uh, sort of taking the lead there, sent a letter to Secretary Scudders with respect to establishing a Stop the Spread testing site in Plymouth. Um, we know that with the holidays coming, it's really important that we all keep vigilant with respect to COVID. So we're trying to make that um, as convenient as we possibly can. Uh, yesterday, we both testified at the MBTA public hearing on closing the Plymouth train station. And we really are, you know, forceful in our views that that is going to have uh, economic direct impact on uh, folks, especially frontline folks, who we really need to, to be able to uh, get to work without too much more difficulty than they're, they're already experiencing. Uh, with respect to the budget, which we've just come off of um, some intense couple of weeks, uh, I've been able to forward an amendment with respect to the Plymouth Nuclear Plant Assessment, um, having wider opportunities for reimbursement for testing, which is going to be crucial going forward, as well as um, increasing the, um, the decommissioning citizens advisory panels um, independence and effectiveness. Um, with the ability to vote for um, the local concerns without being um, kind of um, disempowered or disenfranchised by a lack of a quorum. Uh, through the Senate, I was also able to secure 150000 for mass military support for veterans and 100000 um, for Plymouth County outreach. So hopefully the uh, effect of that and the help there um, will be the wind beneath the, the uh, uh, sails for the folks that work very hard on those front lines and getting the need, uh, veterans food and help with our, um, our outreach program, which is coordinated uh, with the police and, and for, you know, just to battle opioids. We, we want people to have all the tools that they possibly can. And just quickly, lastly, um, some help for the tourism community um, in the uh, economic recovery plan so that um, when we come out of COVID, hopefully um, they'll be up and running because that is foundational to the Plymouth uh, economy. Those are a couple of things. Uh, again, appreciate the opportunity to work together with Matt on so many of them. And I'll stay here for fun. Thank you. And that's uh, State Senator uh, Susan Moran. We're going to ask all of our panel if you could mute yourselves when you're not speaking uh, in order that we can hear uh, those who are speaking. Uh, and at this time, we're going to continue and now go to our business segment. And we welcome back Amy Naples. She is the Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. And Amy, uh, your organization regularly sends out emails uh, updating us with information about the business community. Yesterday, one of the ones that I received gave us information about Thanksgiving uh, food that's available in restaurants, both in uh, in-person dining as well as takeout. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you have planned uh, for Thanksgiving. You bet. Thank you, Steve. As always, a pleasure to be here. And yes, Thanksgiving is upon us. And if you don't have it figured out, don't worry, we have you covered. Um, we have compiled a list of all of the restaurants that are serving Thanksgiving dinners, um, providing takeout, sweets, you name it, we've compiled it. So you can grab that guide on the Chamber's Facebook page or certainly by calling the Chamber office at 508-830-1620. And we're happy to send that to you. If you need help locating a restaurant or coming up with ideas, you can reach out to us. That's what we are here for. So um, I think the restaurants are going to be a little bit busier since families are staying home and more um, smaller groups. So we're hoping that generates some 
um, activity at our local restaurants. Um, first, I did want to mention that the town of Plymouth is still in phase three, step one, and the Board of Health will review moving into step two at the next meeting on December 7th. There's been a lot of questions about that because we have been um, out of red for a couple of weeks. Um, the Board of Health met last night. However, they did not move to move into step two. So hopefully that is to come. Um, we are excited because this coming Saturday is Small Business Saturday and it's the 11th year that that campaign has been taking place and the chamber is a neighborhood champion. And we're excited to rally our community and getting behind supporting our local businesses. We have put together a guide of all the businesses participating. There's some awesome deals and we hope that the community will come out and support them. We know that they need it more than ever. Honestly, that's an understatement. They truly, truly need it. Um, so it's such a great time to save some money, get some great deals, get some awesome, unique gifts. So we encourage you to come out or go online on Small Business Saturday. Again, you can find all Chamber's Facebook page, the Chamber website, plumatheriachamber.com, um, or by calling the Chamber office and we can forward that to you. And lastly, um, the holiday season is upon us in a blink of an eye, it's gonna be the holidays. And we have been very busy. Our Chamber Elves have been busy preparing for a very fun festive holiday season, despite COVID and, and we're moving forward with a festive event for our community. First, we have letters from Santa. So Santa Claus emailed the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce and wants to do something a little special for our community. Children just love receiving their own mail, especially for someone as magical as Santa. So parents, grandparents, aunts, etc., can request a letter from Santa to be mailed to the child. Um, all you have to do is fill out a, a simple application, include a great little deed or accomplishment that the child did this year and a handwritten letter will be sent from Santa. Um, we will not guarantee any gifts, um, but it's just something fun and kind of get us in the holiday spirit. In addition, we've been working with the town at creating a mailbox special for children to drop letters for Santa as well. Um, we will announce when the mailbox will be ready and accepting those letters. Um, so we thought that was just a fun little community something to keep some magic here for our holiday season. In addition, we're working on our holiday stroll, which includes a festival of trees. We are working on that to be put up, those trees put up and decorated in the coming weeks. Huge and special thank you to DPW Director Jonathan Beter in the town for assisting us with this cool, fun concept we've come up with um, and helping us build some stands and all of that. So Main Street and Water Street will be lined with beautiful decorated trees, which will be sponsored by and organizations. There will be a map of all the locations so our community can either drive by or walk the streets to check out the beautifully decorated trees. Something fun, again, for the community. And then our hometown stroll, which is December 10th through the 13th, will include a snowflake scavenger hunt, festive window displays, shopping specials, sips and snacks, live musicians, public art displays, and even an appearance from Santa. So you can find out more about that by visiting PlymouthChamber.com. And um, thank you for allowing me to provide the Chamber update and all of our holiday happenings. Thank you, and that's Amy Naples. She's Executive Director of Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. You can send her your questions to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And now we return to one of our regulars, uh, Plymouth State Representative Matthew Muratori. Matt, when we began this uh, nine months ago, uh, 75 times before this, uh, I don't think we necessarily envisioned uh, that we would still be here. We certainly hoped we wouldn't be. Uh, but one of the things for which we can give thanks are all of the panelists that we've had uh, for these many months. Uh, many people uh, giving of their time and talent uh, to help us and the Plymouth community uh, figure out how to respond to the coronavirus. Yeah, you're right, Steve. And, and we have talked about this on air before. It's, it's been therapeutic, at least for me personally, and I think for all of us doing this. Um, initially, it was... Uh, they were, we were all you know, full of anxiety, not sure what was gonna happen, but by doing these shows, at least for me, it really, it really helped me get through this and, and really understand what was happening. And then 
really, we were realizing how much we were helping so many other people uh, get the, the facts and the true information and what's really happening. And what's encouraging to hear today, Steve, from, from uh, the schools and, and from the chamber and, and, you know, and from, you know, uh, Michael and Mark and the, cham and the chamber, what's happening is we're starting to get back to somewhat normal, whatever that normal actually looks like. It's good to hear the schools are, are doing sports and, and uh, you know, that, that the federal government is, is moving forward now. Um, we should see some normalcy there at some point. Uh, and the chamber's still doing, you know, some of the activities that they do every, every holiday season. And, uh, you know, it, it's good to see that that's happening. I think it's good for our psyche to, to see that happening. Um, let me just, just give you some, some state numbers just to, uh, we'll start with. Uh, first of all, the, the total uh, number of COVID cases since the beginning of this is now over 200,000, it's 201,835. Uh, which is 2.9% of the population of the Commonwealth that has been that has tested positive. Um, interestingly enough, there's been uh, over 40,000, uh, there's 40,000 right now active cases of those 201, uh, 151,000 of those have cleared. And in the last uh, month, there's been over 50, uh, last 25 days, there's been over 50,000 cases of confirmed COVID cases. So you can see the majority of them have been happening over the last month or so. But as we talked before, Steve, the average age is 38 years old right now, whereas before the average age of those um, um, getting COVID was in the uh, was closer to uh, 54 years old. Uh, the average age of those going to the hospital is mid 60s, um, and the uh, the average age of deaths is still uh, 81. So it's it's younger people that are getting it, um, but the older people that are still that still really get sick. 98.5% of those that have died are actually from underlying health condition, which is mostly elderly people. Um, from the period of November 1st to November 14th, uh, here in the Commonwealth, we, uh, from the ages of, of zero to, um, from infants to 39 years old, 16,000 people have, have tested positive. Uh, the ages of 40 to 59, 7,900, almost 8,000 people and 60 plus is 4,600. So you can see the age group is really turned around and it's still the, the younger population that is getting it. Uh, good news is not getting as sick. The hospitalizations, uh, although they are up from when they were back in September, are at, um, at a little under 900 right now of those that are in the hospital. Uh, back on April 22nd, Steve, when we were talking about this, we had almost 4,000 people in the hospital. Uh, so right now we're a little under 900. We still have uh, in the ICU in the Commonwealth, 192 people in the ICU with uh, 88 people that are vented. Um, and that's, um, that's, pretty, that's been steady over the last few weeks. Um, but again, it's not the high numbers that we actually saw back in, uh, uh, back in uh, the spring. There is uh, still plenty of capacity of, of hospital beds for not just COVID, but for any other type of illness somebody may have or, or operation they need, ex need et cetera. Uh, the Commonwealth does have the surge capacity at the DCU center that's being set up as we speak in case we do need that. Uh, right here in Plymouth, um, the number of uh, uh, positive tests are almost at 11, um, yeah, almost at 1100 at this point. Over a 14 day period, it's 12.5% per 100,000 that have been tested positive. Uh, the total number of tests we've had here in Plymouth are almost 3,800, 37,500 tests um, with 122 positive tests in the last 14 days. So we're, we're at 2.63%. So what Amy was, uh, I think it was Amy was talking about the Board of Health, um, they did decide last evening uh, not to come out of, the, um, out of the, um, the red at this point and go to stage two, uh, step two of, of phase three. Um, and I think it's out of abundance of caution why they're doing that at this point. Um, even though we are seeing yellow at this point, when you start looking at the numbers for the last several days, they've been, they've been quite high. One day we had 15 cases. Um, so I think uh, it probably made sense to what they're doing and they'll look again on December 7th. But if we can continue to control these numbers and below, be below 4% um, of the positivity rate in a 14 day period, then uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be doing uh, pretty well. Um, just want to remind people too of the travel restrictions. Obviously, if 
If you don't travel, you know, obviously the advice is to stay home and stay home with the immediate family that you live with. But if people do travel, please go to the mass.gov uh, forward slash COVID-19 website. Uh, when you do come back, there is a mass travel form to be filled out. Um, you are asked to quarantine for 14 days or have a, a negative test within 72 hours of arriving in uh, Massachusetts. <clears throat> Couple of things uh, on the state level as well. Um, the campaign uh, was announced yesterday that uh, uh, things, we, uh, things we love and things that we miss. Um, and we, uh, we, the hashtag is get back to mass, get back mass. Um, we are working towards getting back to the new normal uh, with the vaccines that are coming up on the horizon. And so we're trying to give people hope. Uh, what are some of the things that you've actually missed doing and what do you look actually look forward to doing? So check out that uh, campaign that was rolled out yesterday. Um, also, um, there has been, uh, there's always some negative things that happen when uh, people try to take advantage of and the unemployment in Massachusetts, uh, there is a lot of unemployment fraud. Uh, that's happening. And we're talking tens of thousands of cases that the unemployment office is actually dealing with. Um, so if you are somebody that um, has received a letter or, or call about your unemployment and you're, and you're working, uh, please reach out to the unemployment office or please reach out to, to my office uh, and we'll be glad to, to help you out with that. But uh, we are getting more and more calls, I think Senator Moran is as well, of people that are getting fraud uh, cases. Uh, people are taking identity and trying to collect on it. So uh, we need to really uh, all kinds of work uh, work together uh, on that. Um, I do want to uh, also uh, just reiterate with the schools, um, although I represent both Plymouth North and Plymouth South, I do have a tendency to favor Plymouth South um, because that's where my kids go. And, and, and Patty told me she actually left Plymouth South because my kids started going to high school. So I'm glad to see that she's back there now because there's three more that are gonna be coming through there. Uh, so it's good to see Patty back there. But, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, at least as a Plymouth South person to see Plymouth North winning so many things, uh, especially the Zoom meeting today. It looks like Peter won the Zoom part of this too, Patty. So you gotta step up your game a little bit, please. Um, at least let's, let's start winning something here in Plymouth South. Uh, but when you talk about the schools, and, and we talk about this all the time, that the kids are so resilient. And, and when you start looking at the, the numbers um, uh, from the schools that the schools publish every Friday, uh, there are 7,171 students. Of those, uh, of those uh, 652 students are remote. Everyone else, all the other kids are going every other day. And as of last week, uh, there were mm -hmm. only four positive uh, COVID tests, uh, four positive positive students that were exposed outside the school system. That's four out of 7,100 kids. Uh, it's, just, it's just amazing. Um, there were 74 that were uh, quarantined out of abundance of a caution. And then when you look at the number of employees on the school side, there's almost 1,400. And uh, last week there was, there was only one that tested positive. Uh, and, there were, um, uh, and there was um, 12 that are, that are quarantined for, uh, to be uh, cautious on. So the schools and our kids have just been doing a fantastic job, and I think we can kind of all learn uh, from what they were, from what they are doing, and what they will continue to do for us. So that is the uh, the state update for uh, for today, Steve. Thank you, and that is Plymouth State Representative Matthew Muratori. Uh, and next week we will return to our Wednesday broadcast. Uh, it'll be at twelve noon, and joining us. Uh, with Ken Tavares and Matt Miratori will be Dr. Philip Trifletti, an attending physician at Beth Israel uh, Deaconess. Uh, also, Dr. Barry Potvin, he is the chair, Plymouth Board of Health, will be joined by a representative from the Plymouth Public Schools. Uh, Stephen Cole is the executive director for the Plymouth Economic Development Foundation, and Heather Cosby is a local CPA. At this time, we're gonna return to this week's panel and hear from each of them again. They've had an opportunity to hear from all of the other participants, and we're gonna hear their closing thoughts and their final statement. And we're gonna start with our medical segment uh, with Dr. Mark Wilson. Mark, what do you have for us? Well, I, I guess I'm, again, uh, echoing what's been said already. I'm really pleased with this continued great news uh, about how Plymouth students have responded 
to the need for temporary change in their school experiences. They're following the rules and recommendations and really making the best of these changes. And I was thinking, you know, we often ask our children to act like an adult. Maybe we need to think about turning this around when it comes to COVID protection. Um, I'd also just like to wish everyone a safe and relaxing Thanksgiving and remember to uh, encourage you, please practice appropriate protection so that, so that everybody will be around to have uh, a normal Thanksgiving next year. Thank you. Thank you. And that's Dr. Mark Wilson. Uh, he is Professor Emeritus, University of Michigan School of Public Health Department of Epidemiology. And at this time, we're gonna to return to Patricia Fry, uh, Principal of Plymouth South High School. Uh, Patty, I think uh, <laughs> Representative Muratori is giving you a little bit of a challenge. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, Mr. Miraturi used to be sick of my voice because I advocated so much to get the new Plymouth South High School. So it is fun, Matt, to work here again. The, I never worked in the building I helped create, so with all the incredible community members. But um, I will say, I think you, on my competitive side, the boys' soccer beat North, the girls' soccer lost. So we're in a split tie right now. So anyway, um, but in all seriousness, I think that more than ever, it may sound a little corny. I tend to be a cup half full person, but... The village has really come together. Our students, our staff, I spoke about our calf ladies who got staff member of the month. Our nurses, our heroes in the building, um, the amount of calls they take daily from parents just as a support. So from the guidance counselors, people running our remote classrooms, um, from my prior role at the district level, I get to see all the lenses. And you know, I can't say enough about these kids and the entire Plymouth community that sometimes the press doesn't always focus on the the positives, there are so many positives. Um, I watched these seniors, I watched someone sign a national letter of intent last week. So the future is still very bright and um, we're gonna get through it, I know that. So, um, and Mr. Moratori, be careful. You know how I am, so. And I made sure Mr. Parcelin got hired over there, so he's not a bad guy. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Steve, for having us on. Thank you, Patricia Fry. She is the principal, interim principal, uh, Plymouth South uh, High School. And at this time, we're going to hear from a dueling principal at Plymouth North High School, Peter Parsland. Peter, what do you have for us? Uh, we are we are partners in Plymouth. Uh, I will I I will say it was a tie, but the state representatives' comments stand on their own merits. Uh, and you know, I, I got nothing to say. And I would say that Patty Fry, as an assistant superintendent has excellent hiring practices. I will bring that up as well. So lots of winning on this panel. Uh, anyway, uh, overall, I'm just I'm just happy with the fact that we're still here uh, and that we're learning and the kids are forging ahead with the system that, that started the year. Um, and I really believe, like everybody has mentioned, that it's because of the hard work and the, the thoughtfulness every day um, of the kids to really, and the staff who are just really committed to make this happen. Um, we have amazing teachers who have bent over backwards to kind of find new ways uh, to get kids to, to stay engaged. Our, like uh, Mrs. Fry mentioned, our support staff and our custodial staff are, are working really hard. They're taking a million phone calls uh, and not just giving out information. They're, they're calming parents down and giving them kind of an out, outlook on, on what's happening. Um, and our kids have been amazing. Uh, we, we, our parents have, have, while managing all the stuff in their lives, been really supportive and understanding. Um, we're very lucky to be in this community. Um, I know uh, it, it's tough everywhere, um, but it, it's particularly a little bit easier when you have a community who is invested uh, in trying to, to come together and make this stuff work. So um, it hasn't been a typical school year. It's not gonna continue to be a typical school year, I don't think, but uh, because we have a lot of support and some some great people here, I think we're making the most of it. So. Um, I, I personally wish everybody on the panel and everybody watching um, a happy Thanksgiving, and I hope it, it's a great holiday. For Thank you. Thank you, Peter Parcelin. He is principal at Plymouth North High School. We're now going to return to Michael Jackman. He is district director in Congressman William Keating's office. Uh, Mike, what do you have for us? Uh, thank you, Steve. I won't wade into the South versus North debate. I'll uh, let... Uh, Matt Moratori fight his way through that. But um, I, I will say, just to emphasize, uh, when it comes to the vaccines, which we've talked a little bit about, 
Uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but we have to recognize we are still in the tunnel and we have to do what we can to get to that light uh, to protect ourselves, to minimize our risk. Uh, it's so difficult around the holidays. Thanksgiving and Christmas are my favorite holidays and my favorite time to get together with family. But we know that that's not the reality that we're living with right now. And it is up to all of us as individuals, as families, as a community to do what we can to minimize that risk. And, and, you know, when I think about Thanksgiving, I recently read an article called The Grateful Brain. And gratitude has uh, positive mental health effects. It reduces anxiety and it can uh, build your resilience to deal with, um, deal with uh, issues and problems. So focusing on gratitude, things you're grateful for, things you uh, are really thanking your family members, your friends, the community, uh, things that you can be grateful for to focus on that, which is a great theme for Thanksgiving, because that can uh, help you deal with your, uh, your problems and deal with the issues that we're all confronting. So I would just uh, urge everyone to take a moment over this Thanksgiving weekend and this holiday to focus on the things we are grateful for, because it can be beneficial for us as individuals. And thank you all again for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Michael Jackman. He is District Director, Congressman William Keating's office. And now going back to the state, uh, Susan Moran, uh, you're back with us again today. Uh, this is a time for us to give our takeaway uh, that we want our viewers to remember. And uh, many are watching. Oh, th thanks, Steve. I, I really want to express my gratitude, uh, particularly given the season, for you to continue this information show with Matt and guests. It's incredibly important to have facts when you're trying to plan. I, I want to echo uh, Mike's point. We've got to, you know, continue our resilience. And, uh, you know, the spirit of the schools is, is so uh, uplifting and it really, you know, carrying us through so that we can continue our resolve to social distance, wear a mask. Uh, like most of uh, you all, I'm not going to be with family for Thanksgiving, just to try to get through the holidays, get to a time when we can keep everyone safe in, until uh, we do uh, have a vaccine plan. It's going to take a while. So we've, we've got to um, stay positive. Um, but, but continue the hard work. So uh, happy Thanksgiving to all of you and all of your families. Thank you. And okay. by the way, um, we're still at Port Portage Park. Please call if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, just as Matt had mentioned earlier, happy to help. Thank you. And that is State Senator Susan Moran. And as uh, she and Representative Muratori have mentioned, uh, these presentations uh, have been therapeutic. Uh, not only for us, uh, for the community. In fact, yesterday I was shopping at a local uh, Plymouth retail store, and as I got to the checkout, uh, the cashier uh, recognized me, even with my mask on, and uh, thanked me and uh, wanted me to pass on uh, her thanks uh, to all who participate. Uh, she said, particularly in the beginning days of the pandemic, uh, she looked forward every time uh, that she could watch and hear from local officials uh, and receive information about how we're going to deal with uh, the challenges that we face. So again, thank you to everybody and certainly to Amy Naples, uh, who is Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Amy, uh, tell us uh, what you're going to be doing uh, on Thanksgiving. Um, yes, Steve. So I'm glad you, you mentioned that. I have to tell you, I get so many phone calls because of the show. And I'm so thankful um, for being included and in, giving me an opportunity to um, encourage folks to support local and share important information. So I am super thankful for all the fellow panelists. Um, I am so proud of our community this year. We have certainly strengthened our relationships and our partnerships and we work so well together. I think it's a great example for other towns and communities, and I'm, I'm incredibly proud of what um, this show does, what we do behind the scenes. Um, 
And I just want to say on behalf of the business community, um, to all the viewers, thank you for supporting local. Steve, you are certainly one who supports local, so thank you for doing so. Um, and also, Pete, I am a proud Plymouth North alumni, so go Blue Eagles. Um, and I, I love that the rivalry is still there. It was certainly one when I was in high school 20 years ago, but um, I hope you all have a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. And I will be home um, with my husband and my two dogs and enjoying a home cooked meal and chilling out. That's Amy Naples, Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Amy, I'll be traveling uh, to my daughter's home with her wife and my wife, the four of us, uh, will sit down to a meal cooked by one of the local restaurants. Uh, we've already got our order, uh, and not only that, my son is going to pick up uh, his meal uh, that I'll be picking up for him. So we're going to be uh, buying local for Thanksgiving this year. Uh, Matt Meritori, our state representative, what are you going to be doing? Well, first of all, Steve, I don't know how anybody can't miss your white hair under a mask. So you not, I don't know anybody has such white hair like you do. So you're very recognizable that way. So. Don't be surprised when people recognize you. And of course, you're on TV every three or four days anyway. So um, uh, anyway, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm just kidding, Steve. Uh, I'm actually very thankful for, uh, you know, for, for this show. Um, you know, e even though we've lost some things over the last several months, um, I, I was on Monday Night Talk with Kevin Tachi on ATD last night, and, and we're talking about, you know, the Thanksgiving Day Parade would have been this past Saturday. Um, and so, you know, we miss the, you know, the tens of thousands of people that, that would come to Plymouth and, and really make the holidays feel like their holidays. Um, but those things are going to happen. And uh, with, with all the facts that we give out to people, um, we do this because we want to make sure people understand the data. And as Michael and as Senator Moran has said, you know, let's don't, let's continue to do what we're supposed to be doing, wear a mask, social distance, and, you um, and um, uh, washing hands, um, but also keep in perspective where we were at. You know, again, we, we had almost 4,000 people in the hospital back in April. Now we're down to less than 900. Even though numbers are going up and we are in a surge, it's not, it's not where it used to be. Uh, the number of people who have tested positive for COVID in the Commonwealth, there's 6.9 million people in the Commonwealth, and we've had 201,000 people that have tested positive. So you have to kind of keep it in perspective, but also looking at the facts that the people that do get sick are the elderly people. And that's the people that uh, we really need to, to protect. Um, so if, if you decide you're not wearing a mask and you're gonna be out, then please stay away from elderly people. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, but by wearing the mask and that you're really helping out that, that generation uh, to get through this until we have a vaccine. So. Uh, I'm thankful for, for all the guests that are here today and that come on all the time to, to help us get those facts out. Um, again, as Amy has said, Small Business Saturday is coming up, but I, I think we've had small business uh, throughout this COVID, um, and, and it shouldn't be just one day a, a year. And I think we, we, we you know, the, the, um, it should be more often. I think this, this COVID has actually done that. Uh, reminds us that shopping local as, as much as we possibly can throughout the year is, is a good thing to do. So, so happy Thanksgiving to, um, to all of you and, uh, and your families. Uh, we will be spending Thanksgiving uh, at home. Um, we, we, we just make, just make it under the 10 rule in our family. So, uh, so we just, we just make it. So I, I don't expect to hear from the governor at all that we're over the 10. So we'll, we'll be right at that 10. So, but happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you, Plymouth State Representative Matthew Muratori. And with the number of children you have, Matt, I think you're probably all in the same household also. So uh, that works. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> and uh, thanks to PAC TV uh, for all of your support. And I'm in the studio today uh, with Donna Rodriguez and uh, the staff here at PAC TV uh, supporting us uh, for our 75th uh, presentation. Thanks to Dr. Mark Wilson, Patricia Fry, Peter Parcelin, Michael Jackman, Susan Moran, State Senator, and Amy Naples. Uh, uh, Ken Tavares was going to join us today. Uh, he did get delayed at an appointment, uh, but he'll be back with us next Wednesday. And at that time, we'll be joined by 
uh, Dr. Philip Trifletti, Dr. Barry Potvin, Stephen Cole, Heather Cosby, and of course, also joining us, uh, Matt Miratori. Uh, I'd like to uh, wish all of you who are watching us and joining us today uh, a very happy, uh, healthy Thanksgiving uh, this week. And uh, again, um, I'm Steve Trifletti. I'm Plymouth Town Moderator. Uh, thank you for being with us today, and good day.